everything can change in the blink of an eye. I think it's really important to have that honest conversation and communication with your doctor. We can change so many things if we just bring awareness and talk about it. You know your body better than anyone. Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to a new edition of Beyond the Cancer Diagnosis Interview Series. Today is my pleasure to uh, invite uh, Mila. Uh, she's a cancer survivor. She is very involved in cancer community with a lot of work in advocacy and what is the most important sharing from her own experience uh, to other people. And um, when the information comes from someone who experienced this uh, uh, oncological disease, it's more important than reading books. So Mila, uh, thank you for accepting my invitation. And thank you for letting me be here and share my knowledge and experience. <laughs> it's uh, very important because you share the knowledge, let's say from the field, from the background. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, it is a big difference when we read books or we read statistics and when someone who already experienced this, it's uh, talking and uh, share advices and uh, things to do, things not to do. So for sure it will be an interesting discussions. But um, to start our interview, I will like to ask you if you can briefly share our your story for our, our audience and um, what was to be in that period of in that position okay yeah, that position so i was diagnosed when i was 26 i spent almost two years uh visiting different uh, doctors and hospitals and they didn't believe me so I got misdiagnosed because I was young and then through the COVID pandemic um, period I got diagnosed with color colorectal cancer and I was 26 so it is a very uh, or extremely isolating illness but because it was during COVID, it was even more isolating because no one could be with me during the IV treatment and no one could be with me or I couldn't visit my family, my friends. But um, it was really important for us to do like daily checks and we could do video calls and we would play games even together online. So that that was something or it's something that I'm very grateful about. And to say that I was in shock when I got the diagnosis was it, like it is a... Um, I don't know. I'm like, shock is not enough. Um, because you do not expect to be that young um, and having cancer. If you did everything right, um, if you're healthy, if you are um, active, and if you do all the right things that you're supposed to do. <laughs> so, yeah. And because no one in my family had cancer before, I didn't know anyone from my age gap that had cancer. So, I felt quite quite lonely, honestly. Uh, <clears throat> there are uh, two issues that uh, I um, noticed when you you talk. First was uh, isolating because during COVID, everyone was uh, locked. <laughs> yeah, it was like during lockdown. So, yeah, uh, the only place that you wouldn't want to be was the hospital. And um, the second one uh, was uh, the emotional distress that you you felt at that moment. Uh, it is known that uh, if you have family support in cancer mm -hmm. disease, uh, it's uh, like almost 50% the chances are increasing to get healthy to get better. So you, from the start, uh, didn't have this support. I and did. I did. Yeah, I, I, I it, but, will uh, always, but, I will always, but, uh, yeah, I, in a I different was, way. Yeah, in a different I had, way. I had a great um, 
how can I say, like support team or group of support. So I, I'm very lucky. Um, but yeah, it was through a screen and it, that was tough. And I can, you can have the biggest support system, but because of the taboo around the word cancer um, and you don't want to worry them even more. So you, you do like, a, it's like you act, you're doing an acting where you're better than you really are, where you don't share that much because you don't want to worry them. So there are yeah. a few thingies that, yeah, yeah it's different. It, it, it's kind of, as I call it, uh, it's a kind of shame, uh, not shame in a way that uh, from disease, but as you mentioned that you don't, you have to act, you don't want to, let's say, embarrass parents or brother or sister. So you, you try to, to uh, pass it, uh, not alone, but uh, talking with yourself, being yourself mm -hmm. and uh, be stronger for them. Yes. And because you, you see them suffering and uh, when you, if, even they don't uh, show it, but you feel it and it make it worse. It, uh, not... it make it worse. Yeah. It's because of that, because of that taboo around the world and around having an open and honest conversation about the illness and the side effects and what you're truly going through. So yeah, and, it's because uh, of that. In general, uh, in general, uh, every parent is very protective. So uh, you, it, it is a, a principle in psychology when you want to make a, a good thing, you make it worse. So uh, sometimes it's uh, better do, to do nothing than trying to be helpful because for the cancer patients, it's not good. And I know uh, many parents that were so involved during the treatment and uh, because they wanted to be next to their uh, children, next to them, and uh, even to, to bark in this uh, uh, thing. To carry a little bit of the weight. Yeah, yeah. Of the effect. And sometimes it's good, but sometimes you just have uh, to let the patient be with uh, his own emotion in his own uh, let's say attitude, motivations, mm -hmm. self-control. And um, what I want to ask you next is, um, except this very challenging thing of being in the hospital during COVID, what other challenging challenges did you experience during this period? Because COVID uh, theoretically yeah. ended in 2022, so uh, it passed two years. So what other challenges? for your ages uh, the biggest one and i think every patient or survivor can share is that everything changes you're not the same nothing is the same and they expect you to go back to your life normal life when there's no such thing anymore and i think that's the biggest one but at the same time there's also um like a you can see it with a different perspective of point of view that it can be also seen as an opportunity because you learn that nothing's granted, uh, that everything can change in the blink of an eye. Um, one day you can be living your life and not having to worry about anything and then the next day you can get um, a diagnosis and so, or something can, can happen and it can change the way you act, the way you feel, the way you talk the way you express uh, with yourself or with other, the way you see the world, the way you want to approach different topics or subjects. So I think that's the biggest challenge because absolutely everything changes, but it's also a great opportunity to see life through a different lens, even if you had to do that, like you were forced to learn that. Uh, how... Uh hard is this inside battle uh, when uh, thinking it on the past and uh, thinking further uh, how how hard is to manage this battle because you go further but 
there are moments when you think on the past. What if? What uh, I wish yes. I would. So, uh, is, do you still face this battle? Inside? Oh yeah, I I, I think so. Um, I I I'm not sure if I'm not gonna or if I won't. Um, stop ever having those battles, those internal um battles. But yeah, you do remember um who you were before. You also remember how tough and how bad and how extreme in a bad way everything was. Um and it's also scary to think that it can happen again. And the we, we call it in the community the scan anxiety. Because every time you have a test and every time it doesn't matter if it's just a blood test or if it's a skin, it's a scary. It's a scary even though you, you feel in deep down you know that it shouldn't happen again. You know, because you had that experience that it can definitely happen. So that's 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 that. That's tough. Uh, I I don't think I will I don't, I'm not sure yet if I won't ever stop having those battles between oh yeah it's okay it won't happen again uh, I or maybe it will <laughs> it is it is yeah. uh, it is very important that uh, you seem that uh, you manage very well this denial of the disease this is one of the special coping strategies to have an um, equal equilibrium in denial the disease not to denial everything that you didn't have because that interfere with the uh, medical treatment and uh, so on but uh, it is good that you can manage this and it is good that you have also um, what is called a very a good hope for the future because i saw a lot of patients with so much hope that transform itself in false hope because as you mentioned with the first anxiety they lose all, all the hope you know so it is very important to manage this denial this hope it is not easy but it's very it is important. not easy and, and and i think it changes like i've been maybe better um in the past and i might get the worst scan anxiety of my life the next year i do not think that you can control that or manage that but if you can remind like remind or do your best to remember that it's okay to have those moments and it's okay that every single time that you're going to get an appointment or you're gonna do a test you might feel different about them i th i think that's crucial and i think that's part of the um how can I say what I've learned yeah. or how I feel about it? Yeah, that I have to let myself and be myself and fully accept myself in that moment. So if I feel different than in the past and I feel more anxiety now than I did in the past, I'm going to tell myself that it's part of the, of the process, I guess. And I'm, I'm not gonna, how can I say, I'm not gonna, Mm, back down talk to myself in a negative way or be like oh yeah i shouldn't feel this way i should be in that page already it's like no i am where i am today and, and it's okay to be here and it's normal to be here and it's lucid and it's part of my life uh, unfortunately a uh, cancer disease is a sinusoidal disease as you mentioned in some days you are feeling good but some days without reason we are not good yeah <clears throat> so uh, this is one of the uh, let's say psychological secondary effect of cancer disease this sinusoidal approach of life but now I, I would like to come to a very important uh, issues in all this process of cancer because you mentioned about COVID and uh, Maybe the worst thing in COVID for everybody was the lack of communication with one, with two another. Uh, how important is communication during cancer treatment, in cancer care? And here, uh, I would like to talk 
also about the uh, medical staff, but about parents, about friends, about lover or spouse, if it's and it anyone, any any kind like of everyone, relation, like, yeah. like in general, how important it is yes. to communicate. I think, I think it's key. I think it's one of the most important thing that you can do and have and look forward to. Um, being open and talking or communicating freely without any judgment about it, about how you feel, about um, how are you doing, and about your thoughts and, yeah, like, everything. And I think it's really important to have that communication with everyone involved um, in your life, not only relationships with your um, parents or friends or, um, I don't know, your partner. I think it's really important to have that honest conversation and communication with your doctor. Um, and I think it will be very or extremely helpful to have that open and honest um, communication in every single um, field in the um, oncology world. I'm talking about lawmakers. I'm talking about pharmaceuticals. I'm talking about uh, the caregivers I'm talking about the professionals that work in the hospital I think is key I think it's really important and being able to be your truest self with the people around you I think is really important I did my best to, rem to remind everyone that hey I know I'm going through this but my battle is as important as yours. I do want to still hear about um, the fight that you might had with your mom. I do want to hear about the last TV show that you uh, saw and that you enjoyed and that I might enjoy too. Um, I want to know if you have the courage to write a message to your crush. And I also did my best to um, remind them that the the roots of our relationships were strong enough um to go through this together with honest with honesty so um, you you mentioned uh, this word honest and um, uh, honest communication mm -hmm. uh, and i'm very glad that you you mentioned it because uh, one of the issues of the cancer patients is that they don't want to have these honest conversations they don't want to have these hard conversations with medical team with uh, therapeut with clinical psychologists but uh, it is very important because yeah but some, I, yeah feeling vulnerable it's really tough and not everyone and not everyone at like all, all the time it's um ready or feels ready to feel vulnerable and you you feel extremely vulnerable mm -hmm. <laughs> during those moments um but at the same time for me i think it's something that helps me um heal the different layers of my wound because i think all wounds have different layers. So even though it, I, like it's very vulnerable and I might be super emotional talking about it because it's something that it's really close to my heart. Um, I do my best to remember <laughs> that it's also powerful to own my story and my experience and to talk about it with uh, honesty. And open. This is also an important issue. And uh, you mentioned about vulnerability. Unfortunately, yes. uh, after uh, pediatric oncology, AYA, adolescents and young adults are the most vulnerable category of cancer patients because as was in your case, it is a period of great transformations, emotional, physical. Uh, you are thinking uh, of making a family or you are thinking mm -hmm. to having a child. So I, I would like, because you are very honest and you discuss open about this, I will ask you, let's say, uh, direct questions. Is this, this, this 
a motive or a reason to end a relationship because we, yeah. we are talking about communication. Yes, yes, it can be. Because I don't think society as a whole is ready to um, go through this and be there uh, with someone because there's no any education about it. There's no communication about it. There's nothing about it. And there's no awareness. There's no visibility. There's no place, especially for um, ayas in society in general. It's like we are not, we, we, do, we do not exist. It's either you're too young to be in this um, older care kind of, I don't know, part of the mm. illness or like, yeah. So I, I think it's, it's, it can be something that can break a relationship with a partner if they are not ready um, to be there with you because they don't have to carry anything at all. They just have to be there with you. But if you feel that they are, they are going to be like the center, um, even doing that treatment where you just need to be taken care of and yeah, be reminded that I'm here with you if you need me in every single aspect. Uh, the philosopher Nietzsche said that it is the lack of uh, a friendship, not the lack of love, that end a relationship. So yeah. uh, you have to be friends. You have to be in friends, In this case, yeah. more than ever, than let's yes. say lovers, because it is the lack of friendship that end the relations and you don't have to, to be ill to feel this. Mm -hmm. But, but you, you mentioned another interesting um, issues that make uh, me ask you about this topic. Education, prevention, awareness. Everyone is talking about very, very loudly this nowadays about we have to make preventions starting in Romania, for example, start, starting from uh, uh, for high from high school because they have to know they have to etc. We have to make awareness. We have to make education. But it seems to me that are slogans more than actual facts. More than actions, yeah. So um, where is this gap, or what is the bridge that can uh, close this gap of make it happen? I make it happen i th i think that i think that if we um teach the kids from a young age um about it like we do with other illnesses we do with other things and other aspects important in our lives why don't we do that it's because of the taboo around the word cancer and the power that we give to the illness and why do we do that because we like we can change so many things if we just bring awareness and talk about it and get an education or knowledge about it it would be okay it's part of us it's part of our our society because it truly is why do we hide it why do we keep it closed like hey no it's better to not talk about it that only gives power to the illness and the world so we're not doing anything good. We're not breaking that pattern. We are not breaking the taboo around the world and talking about it. Um, so I, th I think that's key. I think that we should talk about it and um, have a background, an educational background about it too, since a young age. If we talk about um, other illnesses and we talk about other like you learn about the body and you learn about the reproductive systems. Why do not we talk about cancer? What it might when, they, they, when, when the number of patients is only getting <laughs> bigger and it's only rising. Uh, since we are approaching to the end of our interview, I would like for the final to send a message from Aya. Uh, category, but uh, with uh, a require 
to uh, relate it to cancer information because it is nowadays and maybe you face it also misinformation about cancer on social media so on social media platforms so uh, taking this into account what message could you say for aya as a vulnerable group in this <clears throat> battle with uh, oncological disease to keep fighting okay not only keep fighting i don't think we should use the word fight because we're not in a battle <laughs> so we're not in a field with yeah, anything so i don't think fighting or battle like i think we should take those out of our vocabulary if we're talking about cancer and survivors and patients um i think those words they no. <laughs> yeah. they don't do good um to how can I say, you know your body better than anyone. If you don't feel comfortable with, or you don't, you're not sure about um, what they're telling you, you should go and find a different opinion if you're talking with a professional in the medical field. Um, it's really important to have a support system. If you don't have it offline, you can also have it online. There's a community um, in Europe thanks to Youth Cancer Europe, that it's the work that they do, and it's amazing. It's beyond any word that I can, or feeling that I can ever express. Um, and having that sense of community, it's, it's the most important thing for me, or for, I think for any survivor, because you don't have to explain anything. You don't have to tell anything about yourself to, have that shared feeling that only a survivor or a patient can really feel or know that those nuances that we feel um, can only be felt because you went through something like that. So I think sharing your experience, if you feel comfortable enough, is also really good and healing. But being part of a community and finding uh, maybe a local organization is also really helpful, um, but yeah, and be careful also with what you find online because not everything is true. So <laughs> that's stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah. Uh, Mila, thank you very much uh, for being with us today, and thank you very much for the courage to talk about, for the openness, and for the sincerity of your words and uh, thoughts. Uh, I know it was not easy. This uh, why I'm thanking you once again because you shared your own experience, your own feelings, and uh, your own awareness for other I uh, community members that face or might face this oncological disease. Thank you very much, Thank and uh, <laughs> good luck on your future project on further activity okay don't forget to like comment share and subscribe to onka daily on youtube hit the bell icon to stay updated